Hi guys, welcome back. So this week I'm basically going to be talking about flame tubes. Oh, so exciting. Yes guys, this week I'm going to talk about flame tubes, do's and don'ts, a little bit about why we have the different hole sizes and uh, about the jet spec software that was developed by some of the early members of the DIY gas turbine group. Uh, I'll be honest, it's the second time I've done this video. <laughs> I watched my first one, I thought, oh my god, it's morning to, morning to put me to sleep, so no one's going to watch it. So I've, it's what it is. I'll, I'll try and explain it all as quickly as possible, uh, but get the key points over. But uh, before we start with that, uh, just a quick few updates on the, the new engine. Terry's uh, been working again started on the shaft tunnel for the engine it's about the last piece that really has got to be made this exhaust section exhaust section after that but uh, it means now I can once I get the shaft tunnel I can kind of uh, pre-assemble the thing see how everything all goes together uh, shout out to Dartford carts uh, I rang them up the other week uh, we're gonna have to extend the, uh, the go-kart chassis a little bit and I asked them if uh, there's only chance they've got any of the, the tube that the chassis are made out of. Martin turned around and said, yeah, no problem, Andy. I'll send you some up. And it arrived the other day. The uh, thing I'm working on at the moment is the oil system. Now, we've been using this oil pump for some time. And it, it's done well on the car. It's done well on the bike. But this engine's the next stage, if you know what I mean. And... I don't want any half measures, so I'm now working on an oil system using a, a small Group 2 hydraulic pump which will be supplied by MA Hydraulics in the UK. Shout out to them, they've been really helpful, um, been prepared to spend a bit of time on the phone with me, helping me choose the right pump. I mean, I've, I've worked in hydraulics for years, but nevertheless it's still helpful to speak to somebody that does the job and is more up to date with the, the new versions of the pumps and that. And I'm going to drive it with uh, an Alien Electronics um, brushless uh, motor, which would normally be used in a drone or um, a model car or a model plane or something like that. It's an outrunner. Uh, I'll put a link in the description below to their website. The reason I'm using Alien Electronics, for me, they're a UK-based company. But it's not only that. You can actually speak to Bruno, who's the owner of the company, he supplied me the uh, speed controller when, uh, let's say, lesser speed controllers were just uh, letting go. He supplied me uh, one of his speed controllers for the, uh, the starter on the bike, and it's been absolutely phenomenal. I'm using his batteries, and again, the, 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 the cost and the, the, the value of them are, is really good. Um, and the build quality on everything that they, they do. And the, the other beauty is, is if you've got a specific uh, reason to have a motor of certain windings or whatever or certain dimensions and that they can accommodate you they do um, wheels with uh, electric hubs in all sorts so I say I'll put a link uh, in the description below I say thanks very much Bruno for once again being patient with me and uh, let's get on with this uh, <laughs> flame tube design I've done a bit of a, a kind of presentation for you I say it's not the most exciting subject, but it's the one thing that is so easy nowadays to get right. And I just see so many people on YouTube getting it wrong and turbine wheels glowing white hot. And they're like, oh yeah, it's running, but it's not going to run for long. So we'll get started on that then. So, okay guys, you've downloaded uh, Jet Specs. I'll put a link in the description below. You'll be eventually faced with this screen. Combustor and flame tube design, jet specs, turbo analytics. You're not going to bother with that. We'll go for the flame tube design. You click on there. It's quite simple. Select your units of measurement inches, metric in millimeters, or metric in centimeters. So let's go for metric in millimeters. So the inducer area of your compressor wheel which is the the front most part of the the little veins on is 50 mil 
we'll go for holes in the primary area of five mil and holes in the secondary area for 10 mil and in the tertiary dilution area we'll go for 15. You, you, these holes need to be pretty much getting bigger as you go down the flame tube. The reason being as I say the holes are there, the different size holes are there to cause a pressure drop across the holes but for the secondary and the dilution tertiary area you want to keep the the volume or the the speed of the gas is going in to as high as possible so try and keep these holes a decent size and, and again in the primary zone which is where you want the combustion to take place you need the decent pressure drop across the hole to slow the gases down to allow the gases to mix with the the fuel and burn so all you do now is click calculate flame tube and there you go so we've got a flame tube length of 300 millimeters and a diameter of 150 millimeters. You've got 30 holes for the primary zone at 5 millimeters, 5 holes at um, 10 millimeters, and for the tertiary dilution zone, you've got about 6 holes. And now, uh, what you can do if you want, you could play with this. And that's the beauty of if you've got CAD and you're having the flame tube laser cut, you can literally tweak the whole sizes so you get all these to even out and match up. But that's it pretty much. I mean, that's about as exciting as it gets with designing a flame tube using jet specs. So I hope that little bit's been helpful to you. I'll now go on and do you just show you what the flame tube will look like and talk about some of the do's and don'ts with your flame tube. So okay guys, you've you've done the jet specs bits, you've got uh, a layout of your, your flame tube. So what you're gonna end up with is a and excuse the colours but I thought I'd have a bit of fun with the colours. You're gonna end up with a primary zone pretty much represents that. There's 30 holes there at five millimeters and then your secondary zone there's your holes at 10 millimeters and then your, your dilution tertiary zone people call them different things as i say um so that's pretty much you're not going to well i don't know you might be able to make it look those colors good luck to you if you can but generally you've got your, your primary zone secondary and dilution tertiary zone you can see the whole size is getting bigger now what you can do with a bit of experience and again help from the group is your primary zone as I say is the, the main area where you want the fuel and air to mix and, and to get good combustion and one of the ways of doing that is just creating a little bit of turbulence I mean you don't want lots of turbulence but you just want the fuel and air to mix and you want some penetration of the air into the fuel so it mixes so you could mix up the hole sizes in the primary zone. Um, we've got five holes up near the top of the flame tube there for cool, cooling the top wall of the combustion chamber. Uh, we've got five more holes there, we've got ten holes there, and then we've got five holes at a larger diameter. But again, this can all be explained to you on the group and, and why we do it. What I just want to briefly go into now though, is some of the, 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 the crucial bits of information people make mistakes with. You, you need the flame tube to fit the whole length of the combustion, or the whole length of the combustion chamber. So your end plate here, and then what you can do with your flame tube is you can add a cone. What the cone will do is it will aid the transition of the gases into the turbine housing because obviously your turbine housing is normally an oblong shape there is some turbos out there that are helpful in that they've got a circular inlet into the turbine section the ht80s the whole sets they've got a circular and if you can get hold of one of those you'll make yourself a nice engine and i say with the circular inlet into the turbine housing but traditionally 
it's an oblong shape really helpful so you need to make some kind of transition from the cone to the oblong shape but what you do need to ensure is that you get a good seal or a good join there probably some kind of slip joint because what needs to happen is the gases need to go the air compressed air needs to go through these holes if air is just rushing by because you, your flame tube doesn't fill the length of your combustion chamber then the maths involved in calculating your holes is just going to get thrown out the window so then you've got your top plate there so again that you could have a slip joint at the top or at the bottom whichever's easiest um, there's lots of ways and again to discuss this with people that have, have built these before join the group they'll talk you through it and then of course you've got the outer of the combustion chamber and you can see the inlet pipe there now just so you can see what's going off inside one of the crucial bits people tend to skimp on is this gap here between the flame tube and the combustion chamber that needs to be a minimum of half an inch 13 millimeters ideally three quarters of an inch about 19 millimeters that will air the air that's coming in through and out of your compressor discharge pipe into the inlet pipe into the combustion chamber. Music